Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Scott and welcome to my online series of color correction tutorials for EDIUS 6. Now in this set of tutorials there will be 4 or 5 and this first tutorial will be just that. It's just an introduction to the YUV curve, color balance and just the core color correction tools we'll be using throughout. I just want to introduce you to the most basic level of color grading and color correction but trust me if you hang in there the later tutorials uh, really pick up the pace and we get into a lot more exciting, a lot more advanced stuff. Now a lot of the filters we'll be using, actually the only filters we'll be using in this tutorial set are the native filters that come packed with EDIUS 6. These filters alone are quite powerful if you really know how to use them but when combined and using them in conjunction with each other we can really start you know, accessing EDIUS's post-production power. So it's not just about real-time performance here, the tools that come packed with EDIUS as standard are actually really powerful and amazing tools. And you'll notice too that a lot of the filters that I'm going to be using are available in most professional editing software suites, so I guess the skill set that you'll be learning, you'll be able to transfer to any editor you like. But I think if you've already used EDIUS before, especially EDIUS version 6, you'll see why I choose EDIUS over any editor and that's because of its real-time performance. It just cannot be beat. Um, I urge you to test that out for yourself, download the trial, and um, yeah, you'll see what I mean by that. So let's just go ahead and get started. I think first of all, we should start with the first one in the list, which is the three-way color corrector. Now, if uh, you guys are used to earlier, uh, previous versions of EDIUS, you might be confused because the previous versions, it's actually called a white balance filter, and rightly so. Let's have a look at what this filter does, and I'll show you what I mean by rightly so. Let's just drop that filter on top of our clip here. Um, you'll notice I've got a mirror filter here as well, just because I shot this upside down on a, on a Steadicam, so I've just had to, to flip that over. But the point is that um, you'll notice that this shot is very, very orange, um, and that was a deliberate choice, so we can talk about that later. But I shot this at 8000 Kelvin, white balance, on my Canon 5D Mark II, and I also had a, um, a warming filter on front of that, and also... There are, you know, sodium vapor lights everywhere. So you can see that this image is almost a monotone image. Uh, there's still color in there, but you can really see that it's way too warm. Let's have a look at what this three-way color corrector can do to fix that, if that was our goal. So, you know, neutralize this image and making our white balance correct. That's what this tool was designed for. So let's have a go at that. First of all, you'll see when you open the three-way color corrector, just by double-clicking on the filter here, you'll see it is broken up into sort of three main parts, the top part being your color wheels, that are associated to black points, gray points, and white points. And in the middle here, you'll see this limiting box. And the limiter is a very powerful tool. We'll get into that a bit later. That allows us to limit certain values that we affect. And finally, on the bottom, we have our uh, keyframing timeline where we can add keyframes and keyframe values throughout the clip as well. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Also, while we're here, I'll just mention that every single EDIUS filter has the ability to split screen. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we uh, use this little preview pane here and we click this split screen here. Let's just pretend we push blue into our picture. You can see straight away we have a direct comparison between what we've changed and the original image that we recorded. So that's really powerful stuff when doing color grades. So I will just emphasize that EDIUS is real time and the reason I use it is because it's ultimate speed. It's amazing. Maybe I have a, you know, a mild case of ADD but I don't like waiting. I don't. And if I'm trying to be creative and trying to get a certain grade or certain color look if I have to render that or if I have to, you know, wait to see what I've adjusted, then, you know, I don't want to do it. I don't have time to do it and I lose that, that creative buzz. So um, EDIUS allows me to, to keep that and really work in real time and see exactly what I'm doing all in full resolution, all in real time. It's amazing stuff. So anyway, let's get back into this filter. You can see there straight away I move this little dial around into blue. If I'm um, delicate about it and really have a look at what I'm doing, I've almost balanced that shot. Uh, within seconds. So there's the original. Here's a shot that would have looked like this on the night if I use the correct white balance. We could probably get a better version of that just by sliding this middle slider in the color wheel here. Now why did I jump straight for the gray balance? Why didn't I use white balance or black balance? Basically because I know, uh, just looking at this shot, that it's mostly made up of mid-tones. I mean yes there are some highlights here in the light and yes there are some shadows under here but the image is quite flat. It's very, it's mostly mid-tones and my mid-tones are my gray balance points. So that's, I know that sliding this around is going to affect most of my image and, and correct most of my orange-ness. And a lot of the clips we're going to be seeing and, and using as examples I shot with the new uh, Cine Style preset for the Canon 5D Mark II, uh, made by Technicolor. Amazing, amazing uh, picture style that just opens up 
a lot more for us uh, when we're doing color grading and trying to attain uh, certain looks. And that's part of the reason why this image is so flat looking. There's no real black point there. So anyway, there we go again. I've gone off on a rambling tangent. But let's explain some of these a little bit more. So we played with that gray balance and you can see what that's doing. Basically, if you want to correct an image, if something's too warm, you push the opposite color of that warmth. And as you can see here, warm tones are up here on the left. And the opposite of that is our blue. So if we want to correct something, we push the opposite color into it. And you can see right there what it's doing which is uh, correcting that orange. Now we also have here, I've just clicked default to reset that, we also have here a black point. If we slide that around, you can see what it's doing. I mean, this is the beauty of the three-way color corrector. It's actually only affecting parts of our image that are shadows, our black points. Now that's the whole idea of this filter is it's split our image up into three luminance parts and then within those luminance ranges we can affect color. So that is the power of this tool at its most basic form. And you can see there that I'm sort of playing with the shadows so if we default that and go to the white balance, the white side, the highlights, you can see uh, this, the highlights here are actually changing just like the other values were with the other tones of our image. So this really gives us flexibility and freedom to affect all areas of our image much more than say, and shall I go there now, the color balance filter. So the color balance filter, let's drop that on top of here. Let's delete our three-way color corrector, double click color balance and just have a look here. Now, color balance is a useful tool, but it's definitely not ideal, and I'll try and explain why. The color balance filter is a linear adjustment filter. In other words, that every single value that we change uh, affects every single pixel in our image. So you can see here that if we've adjusted everything by minus 21 on the chroma value, every single pixel in our image is being changed by that same value. So we have no flexibility in affecting certain areas like we did with a three-way color corrector. So it can be useful at times, and I'll show you when I do actually use it, but I tend not to use this filter. Um, also, we can adjust brightness, but once again, we're adjusting every single pixel in a linear fashion. Um, so we can just press zero there to reset, uh, zero there on our numpad to reset that. And um, once again, contrast, we also have control over. So, you know, with a bit of tweaking, we can get, you know, kind of a cool look here. Um, quite a desaturated cool look, I might add. And we can play with our color values as well. And, you know, you can say that's pretty sort of cool look compared to what we had to begin with. But, it, maybe it is. <laughs> but that's not ideal. And that's not really giving us the flexibility that um, EDIUS really allows us to have. So it's a useful tool. But let's just say for now that there's better ways to do this sort of thing. So let's delete that filter as well. Go back to our effects. And maybe I should mention in this first tutorial as well that my windows might not be set up the same as you and you might notice that I'm missing buttons here it might look not look exactly the same as your radius but I've customized that and um, that's part of the reason I love this software is it's completely customizable and that includes where my bins lie so for example I could have my effects tab on another window or I could um, you know I could have a different view for that so we have more a graphical representation I could put my bin wherever I like I can switch these windows around like so and and yeah, but this is a color grading tutorial. <laughs> See, once again, I've just gotten uh, carried away here. But the point is that you can completely, completely customize EDIUS to work like any editor. Luckily for me, I'm a freelancer, so I have to use a lot of editors. It's great because I can really customize EDIUS, which is my main editor for my studio, to work exactly like I like. Anyway, so where were we? The next thing we're going to have a look at is a nonlinear adjustment effect. So we saw how the color balance allowed us to affect contrast and color and things like that. Uh, but once again, that was in a linear fashion. So let's use another filter, which is by far my favorite filter. It's the YUV curve. This is a very, very powerful, very, very powerful filter. Now the YUV curve allows us to adjust things in a non-linear fashion. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you saw with the three-way color corrector, everything was split up into our blacks, grays, and whites. Well, Let's have a look at this crazy looking filter now. We have three windows once again, but this time we have Y, which represents our luminance channel. We have U, which represents part of our color channels, and V, which represents the remaining color channels. And you can see if I push these bands around into the top left, you've got this sort of purpley blue color. Bottom right, we have yellow. And in the V channel, we have top left, which is uh, magenta. Bottom right, which is a green or a cyan or whatever you want to call that. So you can see straight away how this sort of thing is laid out. And it looks a little bit scary, but let me show you its power. So let's have a look and focus mainly on this luminance 
curve here, the y value. Now our y value, if we push that around, you can see quite simply it's just adjusting luminance in our image and it's not affecting chrominance, so that's cool as well. But what the real power is, is that we can add anchor points to this curve. Now what are anchor points? Well, they're these little points I'm adding here. So I just click on the curve once and we have an anchor point. Now, once you add anchor points, they don't actually do anything until you move them around. You see I've added three anchor points here. If we move this bottom one around, you can see that I'm only affecting shadow areas because this bottom left-hand corner of our YUV curve represents um, the lower shadowed areas of our luminance. So you can see there, as I move that around, I'm only affecting that channel. So already, we're adjusting this image in a non-linear fashion. We're adjusting luminance values um, based on shadow. And if we add another point, you can also remove points just by right-clicking on them. But just say we add another point, and the more points you add, the more control we have. If we add another one down here, we can even refine even more what we're affecting. So now we're even crunching that range even smaller so we can really only affect the car and the shadow underneath the car. And similarly, we can affect the highlights of our image as well. So if we go up here and have a look, you can see the lights in the car park back there. We're really only affecting those. We're really only affecting the highlights. So that's a really powerful feature of the YUV curve. In the next few tutorials, we're going to delve right into that and see how this power can be unleashed. And I'll just keep stressing, this is all in real time. This is, this is amazing stuff. And you can see also that we have the ability to split screen this as well. So that's really handy and all EDIUS effects have that. Now, you might have heard the term contrast curve and that's exactly what they're referring to is in our luminance curve, we can create a contrast curve and that's exactly what this is. So if we have a look at a contrast curve, it's basically just an S curve like this and the more extreme you go, the more contrast you have. Basically, your blacks are being crushed and your highlights are being pushed that doesn't look very pretty, but you can you get my point. And if we split the screen and we create a contrast curve here, you can see that now we're getting back some of that some of that detail that the super flat picture style destroyed. Well, actually maintained for us, but um, yeah, basically because we shot super flat, we have to push back our blacks and bring back our whites as well. So there's just a little adjustment that I've made with a contrast curve uh, with a YV curve. Um, yeah, so we're going to cover that a lot more in. The next tutorials actually I use this filter more than any other filter it's absolutely amazing so that sort of gives you an overview of the filters the main filters we'll be using for color correction fixing up contrast and color obviously we're going to get into some specific looks and it's going to be really exciting we're also going to be covering new filters in idiots like the mask tool the free form mask tool this is extremely powerful extremely powerful and we're also going to cover combining effects so using say four filters at once to get a certain look Thanks for watching. I think until we see the next tutorial, the best thing to do is just have a little play with these filters that I've talked about and see if you can just get your head around them and get used to at least their functionality until we start getting into practical uses for them. So thanks again. My name's Matt and I'll see you soon.